Good morning. It's so nice for Sue and I at last uh, to be here in Durham again um, in person. We've just enjoyed uh, three wonderful days in the presence of God uh, as uh, 150 leaders from regions beyond in the UK gathered and Alan and Jenny and their team served us wonderfully. So we're coming on the back um, of blessing to the word um, this morning. Um, on my heart, God has been speaking to me recently about ordinary people doing extraordinary um, works for Jesus. Now, sometimes you hear of this, this phrase, the man or woman of faith and power. Well, they just don't exist. Um, uh, what, what does exist, and you read it in the scriptures, is just ordinary people who just get caught up with Jesus and his mission and somehow do extraordinary works. And uh, again, you you sometimes you read of people that we, we don't even know what their names are. So, for instance, the uh, the woman at the well, the, the Samaritan woman, we don't know her name, uh, and and she wasn't exactly living a sort of you know a perfect holy life, and yet she meets Jesus, and through that encounter, she brings a whole a whole village or town um, to Jesus, and and becomes one of the unnamed evangelists in the New Testament. And then there's the Gadarene demoniac, probably the most demonized person that's ever lived. After encountering Jesus within an hour, he's, he's clothed in his right mind. And he's saying to Jesus, I want, I want to now be part of your team. And Jesus said, no, I've got a job for you to do. I want you to go uh, through the Decapolis, which was 10 Greeks towns and share what I have done for you. So very ordinary people. Oh, wow messed up people but who encounter Jesus and then do extraordinary works for him and Luke introduces us in the ninth chapter of the Acts of the Apostles to this this guy called Anna Ananias and I just want to uh, read something from Luke chapter 9 um, I'm going to begin at verse verse 10 I'm sure you're familiar with this character in Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called him to him in a vision. Ananias, yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he's praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he has to suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptised. And after taking some food, he regained, he regained his strength. And that's basically all we know about Ananias. Um, Paul refers to him later when he has been um, saved from the mob in Jerusalem by the, the Roman centurion. And as Paul's given this address, he mentions this man who, who is a man of a good reputation. He's a devout man. He's, he's a man who loves God. Um, but that's all that we know we know about him. Um, I guess for most of us, if we're honest, we would say we don't regard ourselves as anything particular. We, we don't see ourselves as extraordinary. It was interesting at the conference. Uh, we had the father of uh, uh, our, our, if you like, our movement, Terry Virgo, with us, who uh, was the founder of New Frontiers. 
And uh, it was introduced with, by somebody with flowing terms as a, uh, an amazing man, et cetera, et cetera. But Terry got up and he said, actually, I'm just a very ordinary man who just God has got hold of and given me something to do. And, and he, he wasn't being um, other than himself. And that's what he really believed. So some of these people that we read about in the scriptures think, wow, what amazing people. But they were only amazing in as much that they belonged to Jesus. And that's what we got here with this guy, Ananias. Um, let's put it in context um, so we can understand, you know, what it was the Lord was was, was looking for Ananias to do. Um, I'm surprised there was any disciples left in Damascus because Paul's reputation had gone before him and they knew that this man had been responsible for, um, with others for the death, horrible death of Stephen when he was brutally stoned to death. But more than that, um, he'd imprisoned uh, other people. Maybe others had been put to death. Paul was, was a fanatic. He believed that this, he believed that this sect, uh, of this Jesus sect, was a cult, uh, and, and it was blasphemous. And he, 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 he decided it was going to be if the last thing he ever did, he was going to destroy this cult. How can, how, how can a man who's been crucified, a man who's been cursed on a tree, how can he be Israel's Messiah? So, as he travels to Damascus. He's got this one thing in mind that he believes he's doing, he's doing the will of God by destroying this Jesus cult. And so I guess as in Jerusalem after the martyrdom of Stephen, you know, it was pretty emptied of, of Jewish Christians because they knew that uh, persecution uh, was already beginning to happen and the same thing in Damascus but for Ananias I guess he was an older guy may have been an elder in the synagogue we, we, we don't know but he remains there and 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 God speaks to him um, so Ananias Ananias is just described by Luke as a disciple um, who what is a disciple in the New Testament well it's one who trusts and loves Jesus and is available when needed and Ananias is needed um, because um, this, 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 this man Saul of Tarsus has just had a life defining vision and for three days he's been in, in intense prayer and he's gone without food and water for three days I mean it's just about the limit that you can go without water and I, I looked this up and apparently this was if you like the most serious fast that a Jewish man could go through and it, it was linked very much with with a seeking of God and repentance of past deeds and so here is his um, here is Saul who's done wicked wicked things and Ananias when he when he when he hears from the Lord that he's to go and 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 minister to this man, um, he, he 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 discusses this. He, he says, "Lord, this guy, are you are you sure you got this right? Because this guy has done wicked things, uh, particularly to to your people, our family. Um, he's he's put people to death." And so, are you sure this is the and 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 the Lord says to him, Ananias, just go because this man, I want I want you to go and minister to. Him. I want I want you to be responsible for laying hands on him. He's to receive his sight. He's going to be healed through your ministry. He's going to be filled with the Holy Spirit through your ministry. And he, and, and I want you to tell him that he's going to suffer many things. For my name's sake, he's going to stand before kings, and 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 he will be a man who will know a life of suffering, because he's my representative. So just go, Ananias, and Ananias does doesn't doesn't. There's no more argument with the Lord. He just he just goes, and does what he's told. He does. He lays hands on him, and his sight is restored. He re he is filled with the Holy Spirit, and then. And Ananias baptizes him in, in, in water. Um, the Lord didn't say that, but Ananias understood that this the baptism 
is so important because it's that it's that it's that testimony both of heaven and of the one that's being baptized that the old life is gone and the new life has come i'm now alive in christ job done and for lot for saul now we know as paul the apostle paul now he starts a new life as a disciple of jesus himself so when you try and analyze just this little passage here um it, 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 it's it's phenomenal um, ananias is is the launching pad for paul's global ministry and if i can put this in this way it, this could be you or me not not because we are anything special but because as disciples of Jesus, he may well just use us as a, as, as in, our, in, in our ministry to be a launching pad for somebody who's going to do amazing things for the Lord. So I just want to share three things here about really what is a disciple of Jesus. Now, we're living in days when and all, all sorts of things are happening around the world and some very, very good things. And, 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 and in one movement, there's, there's been talk of uh, real disciples. And I think they've taken it a little bit out of context. So what, I want to try and put this into, into the context here. What is a, a real disciple? What, is, what do real disciples do? Well, the first thing we find here is that, is that um, Ananias is... What is he doing? He is praying to the Lord. In other words, he's cultivating his relationship with the Lord Jesus. And it's weird in a sense. He has a vision about another man having a vision. Saul is having a vision of the Lord calling Ananias to come and minister to him. And Ananias is having the vision. That, that Saul is actually hearing and seeing that. Um, and uh, that's what disciples do. They cultivate their relationship with the Lord Jesus. Um, the, the one thing God desires, probably more than anything else with us, is intimacy. And when you when you read through the Gospels, you find that, um, this is so modelled with Jesus in his humanity as he relates to the Father himself. When we were at the conference yesterday and we were really in the presence of God, I was reminded of just in my childhood, I was born uh, in a, a lovely, beautiful place called Abergavenny in South Wales. And uh, I would regularly walk up the Sugarloaf mountain with my father and I continue to do that and do still to this day with Sue but I can remember as a, as a young man a young boy rather going with my dad and we'd, we'd, we'd have a sort of stick to, to to take us up but we never took any water with us took some food but never took any water because we, we used to drink um, by the brook that was beautiful um, cold water running down from the mountain and my father took me and taught me how to drink from the brook and as I was thinking of that yesterday in the conference I was just thinking yes that's what that's what the father taught Jesus to drink by the brook to come and drink of that living water that relationship with Jesus and how Jesus wants us to have that relationship with him because it's out of that relationship that God speaks to us and 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 we and we cultivate that sensitivity with the Holy Spirit so that we can do the works that he's prepared for us and and he prompts us and so we can have many adventures with the Lord Jesus but that first thing is so important that we cultivate that relationship with Jesus and then secondly um, he, he heard he heard the Lord and he replied. Um, in other words, he was available and he was prepared to do whatever God wanted him to do. I, I like the conversation here 
that there's, there's honesty here because it's not that it's not that Ananias thinks that God's got it wrong. <laughs> we, we don't want to think that way uh, because God doesn't get things wrong. But it, but because of the relationship that's been cultivated, he can say to the Lord, Lord, this guy has is he's done he's done horrible things. He was there when Stephen was 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 put horribly to death and he was and he was one of the guys who who sanctioned that and now he's coming here and he, and, he, and he's going to do the same thing if he's given a chance here that's why everybody's fled this city um you know so, so he he has that relationship with god that he can say look i um are you sure about this or am, am i hearing you right i need to know and the lord doesn't mind us questioning asking Hey, is this is this? Am I have I got it right, Lord? Am I hearing you right? And the Lord just says, Ananias, you just go. Disciples are those who are available. And when you look at this story, this is a big deal. This is a big deal. This is the guy who is going to stand before kings and princes. Uh, he is the guy who's going to take the gospel to the Gentile nations. He's the guy who eventually is going to stand before Nero in Rome. And so this was a big deal. And this unknown, this unknown disciple living in Damascus, who didn't flee from the city as others did, is the one that God uses to get this ministry of Saul started. But there's one more thing I notice here, which I love. <laughs> he's not only obedient, he, he, he knows grace. He's a, he's a grace-filled man. Because as he goes to Saul, he calls him brother. Now, I think if it would be me, I would have said, I would have said, hey, Saul of Tarsus, you know, I, I, I've got a beef with you. You know, I, I know what you've been up to. I know the wicked things you're doing and, you know, I, I don't know why the Lord has chosen you. you know, I mean, you'd be my last choice. I think I would have given him a bad time before I laid hands. And maybe I wouldn't. But I, I, you can't, you can be tempted to think that. This guy does not deserve grace. This guy de de deserves a bit of his own medicine. But that's not what Ananias, this is this man's, this man's heart is soft and gentle. You see, because... As Paul was to write later himself, we have all fallen short of the glory of God. That means both Gentile and Jew alike, we've fallen short. There was, there's only one that's never fallen short, and that is Jesus, the one and who laid it down so that we could receive grace. And so he comes full, full of grace and and. And, it, and that is just an, an, an amazing thing. And the fact that he baptised him as well, because he knew that that was, that was so necessary for Paul to be fully fledged into the family, into the family of God. So there we have one ordinary servant, disciple of Jesus who does amazing things. So let's just... Let's just sum up by saying this. What did he actually do? Well, he's not called an apostle, but he did an apostolic work. He laid hands on this man. He commissioned this man to be the, the apostle that he was to be. He operated in a prophetic ministry. He heard God. God said, this man is going to suffer many things for my name's sake. And he brings that word, that prophetic word, to Paul, so he knows that his life is no longer his own, and that will mean suffering as well. He 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 operates in a healing ministry. How amazing! <laughs> Lays hands on him, and his blindness, he's healed of his blindness. So this one man is operating in various ministries, which I'm sure he never ever expected. To operate in and it's all because he's a faithful disciple he's there he has a relationship with God he's he's available he he is he is willing and 
And out of that, that um, um, moment of, of obedience, we find this man, Saul, his life is changed, transformed. He now has a calling in God that he never expected himself. And then we find what happens afterwards. They go and they have a meal together with other disciples there. I'm sure Ananias was available uh, and was there at that meal. And so, and so that's it. We hear nothing more of this disciple Ananias. I, I would imagine there were other things that he did for the Lord, but we, we don't really know. But what, what, what we do know here is if we will just be simple, faithful disciples doing what God calls us to do, we will do many wonderful, extraordinary exploits for Jesus. And I think that is wonderful. The wonderful thing about our salvation is this, that we've been cleaned up through Jesus' blood. We've been cleaned up and restored to the Father. But more than that, we are now in partnership with the Father, Son and Holy Spirit to do exploits and works for Jesus, which he's prepared for us before the foundation of the world. What an amazing thing that is. So thank you for giving me the opportunity of speaking to you this morning. I hope this really inspires you and, uh, and, and, and you respond with faith um, to this message. Um, don't put yourself down. You're a child of God and you have been, you have been chosen and appointed to do good works and bear much fruit, fruit that will remain. For Ananias, if he'd never done anything else for God in his whole lifetime, that fruit remained for him. So there we are. Let's just pray as we come to the end of this. And uh, let's, just, let's just give God thanks, first of all, for our salvation. But more than that, or alongside that, let's give thanks, Lord, that we are, we are included in this glorious mission to reach others with this equally glorious gospel. So we thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this story of this wonderful disciple who, because of his obedience to you, did an extraordinary work that you called him to do. And Lord, because of that, and because of what we've learned this morning, we pray that you will use us in the same way as we cultivate our wonderful relationship with you, Lord Jesus. We, we long to, to bear much fruit and bring much glory to you. So thank you for this wonderful passage of scripture. Amen.